Welcome to Inside the Lexus Lounge. I'm your host, Alec Keith, and we're honored to have with us today, Brett the Hitman Hart. Brett, thanks so much for being here today. My pleasure. So Brett, I thought my first question, I wanted to kind of talk about how you got started in the business. It was 1978, you got your first start at wrestling, you kind of got thrown into it, and early on you were billed as Buddy Hart. You want to tell us a little about that and then how you turned into the Hitman? Buddy the Hart Trop, this goes back a long time ago. Um, you know, I first got my start in wrestling. I just uh, came up as one of the Hart boys. My, my brothers Bruce and Keith and Smith were all wrestling back then. So I got into it and uh, initially somebody got hurt and then I got uh, took somebody's place. And once you start, you start. That was kind of where I started. Then I went to Puerto Rico and I, I wrestled for my dad and went to Japan and stuff as Bret Hart. But I, I got a chance in Toronto to wrestle um, probably about four or five years after I started, still in my early days before WWF. And uh, I was so excited to finally go somewhere. They had big plans for me. They're going to do all these big things with me. And then they told me, they said, we've got a guy wrestling in, uh, that he's like a, a job guy or a guy that he loses every week, every night, every match. He, his name, we, he, we call him Bret Hart. So we can't bring you in as Bret Hart because this guy's basically sullied the name and so they said, we're going to call you Buddy the Heartthrob Heart. And I remember I hated it, but uh, it was a break. And so I, I wrestled as Buddy the Heartthrob in uh, Toronto, Maple Leaf Wrestling for, I don't know, about six months. And then I had some knee surgery and went through an injury. And then WWF kind of bought out Stampede Wrestling, funny enough, and then bought out uh, Maple Leaf Wrestling. And so now it was WWF and Vince McMahon were like the bosses of Maple Leaf Wrestling. And uh, I was almost dreading it when I started that they were going to call me Buddy the Heartthrob because that's what they called me, Maple Leaf Wrestling. And I remember I got there and they said, no, nah, we're just going to call you Bret Hart. And I was like, lucky for me. So everyone in Calgary and in most North America knows the story that you, know, you went on to the Hart Foundation won the tag team belts and you branched off on your own and, and then turned into Brett the Hitman Hart. In 2007, you wrote a book and I have it right here. And I want to let you know, this is a great book. I really enjoyed it and the illustrations that you did inside it are just remarkable. Now, what, you speak the truth in this book and there's some great stories. Did you have any backlash or, or, or cr uh, criticism from anyone after you published the book? Um, well, nobody likes everything, you know. Um, a lot of people had find fault with certain things in the book. But uh, as far as I go, as I'm concerned, I have, I have nothing, I had nothing to hide when I wrote the book. I wrote the book from a very honest perspective. And, you know, when you write a book with the magnitude of what this book tries to do, you don't want to leave things out. You want to tell the whole story. So that when you look back years later, you go, oh, yeah, that's only part of the story. I should have told the whole story. I, I didn't want to be a guy that writes a book and then has regrets about what he didn't put in. And I thought right away, it's like, you want to tell everything. You want, I want my reader, the person that's going to pick this book up, to really understand what it was like to be me, what it was like to walk in my shoes for the, like the Montreal Screwjob as an example. You know, people always second guess what I should have done, or he should have done this, or he should have done that. I have brothers and former wrestler friends that always have criticisms about what I should have done or could have done or would have done. You know, none of them were Bret Hart. None of them walked in my shoes. None of them knew what it was like for me that day to be in the circumstances that I was in. And uh, so I, I, I told it all. And I didn't, I didn't, um, you know, I kind of, I didn't, I didn't uh, saw, sugarcoat anything. I, everything is the truth. And one way, good way to know it's the truth is that nobody's ever been able to question or like in all the fact finding to go back and say okay that never happened or that never happened which I could do with most wrestler books and go that was even that didn't even happen in Phoenix it happened in Detroit or some whereas in my book everything is so accurate because for all those years I had a dictaphone or a tape recorder and I would talk into it and explain what happened that night or that day so that all these years later when you go back and you review it I know exactly what happened because I made note of it the day it happened so it's a very honest, accurate book in, in a world of that's so misunderstood and uh, not easy to define. I think it's a great book. If you haven't had a chance 
Definitely check it out. Read it. It's a must read. Brett, you have been voted as one of the top 50 Canadians of all time. That's quite the honor. What does that mean to you? Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure who did the counting or how they did the counting, but uh, I'll always take it as a compliment. Um, but I don't, I think I think of a lot greater Canadians than me that did more, more important things like, um, you know, cures for diseases and, you know, politics and different things that are so much more to, to those kind of heroes. But I, I definitely had an impact on Canadians, and I think um, it's my understanding when they did the CBC Greatest Canadian thing that people never forgot the, the Montreal screw job, basically. And it was people saw it as a Canadian standing up to, an, to America. And, uh, and it was kind of like that. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a bad way to look at it. And so I've always been proud of my, my efforts as a Canadian to, you know, I think what it says more about me is that I, I always st stood up for myself. I, I, I had a lot of backbone and I uh, wasn't afraid to speak up or um, defend my position kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I, I think I've done that in life where I've always been very honest and forthcoming about my, my qualities and my, and my faults at the same time, uh, my achievements. Excellent. Brett, you've been a Lexus owner and guest of ours since 2001. You've, you get all your servicing done here. You have an SC430. You now currently drive a Lexus LS. Can you tell us a little about the vehicles that you're driving and some about the customer service you receive here at Lexus of Calgary? Well, you know, I've had such great, such a great experience. Sundeep is always really good with me, takes really good care of my cars. And they, you know, I've been coming here because they do a good job and uh, I feel after all these years, it's going to be 16, 17 years now. I feel like it's a little bit like a family here, and they, they actually care, and they bend over backwards to accommodate not just me, but I, well, you know everyone I know that that's here. And uh, you know, you don't get the best quality in in every place. And uh, like for me, coming here all these years, it's never never diminished. It's always been first rate, and uh, everyone bends over backwards to make sure that I'm happy and. Uh, I take note of it. Brett, we really appreciate your time. As a fellow Calgarian, you know, I really appreciate everything you've done for the city and you put us on the map. And thanks so much for being here today. So Sorry. thanks so much for tuning in to another edition of Inside the Lexus Lounge. Brett, do you have any closing remarks? Well, I just want to say that Lexus of Calgary is the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be.